Saturday Social is powered by EA Sports FIFA 23 with PlayStation. But only one place to start, Joe. We're going to start by talking about Man City yes. and Real Madrid because what a game we witnessed between two, I'm going to call it, obviously two of the best sides uh, in European football, in world football, in fact. Uh, what a Champions League semi-final first leg that was. Uh, and the other thing we noticed at the end of the game, there was a lot of mutual respect. There was a lot mm. of international teammates, but also, aside from that, a lot of respect from the two sets of players, including this that we saw uh, on social media. This was just one of uh, many examples that we saw. And this was Kyle Walker uh, and Vinicius June. I think we can see it uh, any minute now by the magic of TV. There it is. Uh, what a battle that was, by the way. Vinicius Junior yeah. and Kyle Walker. Uh, and again, it just showed the respect they have. The match finished one also very evenly poised ahead of the second leg. I actually can't call this at all no. the second leg. Uh, I'd be very nervous if I was a City fan. I'd also be nervous if I was a Madrid fan. It's so tight. So we thought the Saturday Social whiteboard out. Let's do a classic mm. Saturday Social combined 11. The rules are not that complex, Joe, but in case you've never seen a combined 11 yeah. at home, do you want to explain them? Yeah, it's very, very simple. Seems we've got a Manchester City fan and we've got Dougie Critchley, who is something of a European football expert. Yeah. No, you are, dudes. Okay, you are a bit of a European it. football <laughs> expert. We thought perfect time. Combined 11. Yeah. You've both got Real Madrid and Manchester City in front of you. You're going to have to debate each position, so goalkeeper all the way through to forwards, to build out the combined 11. It's very simple. 4-3-3 yeah. three, three, formation. We've done this a million times before, but it's a great battle today. Love Two it. massive teams. Very go... difficult. And based on this season. Based on it. this season, yeah, I think. Crucial. We'll do it based on... Which is crucial, actually, especially yeah. when Real Madrid are involved. Uh, should we start with goalkeeper? Uh, for me, it's, it's easy. As much as I love Edison, um, obviously his distribution is world class. It's probably the best yeah. of its kind in the world. I can't, I can't not put Courtois in. You know, for me, he, his saves in the in the final last season against Liverpool, one of the best I've ever seen in yeah. the final for me. Yeah, I'm surprised wow. he went for it, BV. But yeah, I totally agree. I think there's nine saves in that final. He's so clutch in the Champions League. Didn't have a lot to do on uh, Tuesday night. I didn't think either side really created too many clear-cut opportunities. But this is a guy that's been there and done it. I think he's been one of the most underrated keepers in the world at Atletico, Chelsea, now Real Madrid. I think he's a dead cert for this. Because Edison has been a bit shaky at points this year as well. Uh, no comment on that. I was, I was nice about Courtois. We can just put Courtois Yeah, do no you know what is, is this, Who's cheating. this guy? What has he done with Boobie? He's a new man. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> he'll be a Leverman man City player. Boobie did wow. say this, though, before it started, that he's worried he is a jinx. Yeah. So that he doesn't want to <laughs> hammer Real Madrid too much in case he jinxes them. <laughs> that was Boobie's own words. Reverse psychology. OK, do you want to stick in? Let's get Courtois in. Good placement, Dukes. Yeah, that'll do. OK, right back. Difficult, this one. Easy, in it. This is easy. This is. We're looking at one of the best right backs to ever come out of this country. Uh, for me, I think top five right backs to ever play in the Premier League. Uh, what he did against Vinicius, relatively speaking, I think Vinicius actually cooked him a couple of times. But how he man marked Mbappe out the game in the World Cup, yeah. we're talking about. I think the best right back in world football on his day, still. Really? So that's, that's that's for me. So why doesn't he get picked every game for Man City then? If he's the best right back in world football on his day? Technically, he's not gifted enough on the ball. With all due respect, um, I think someone like John Stones popping into midfield, knocking it around. Even Rico Lewis can do that job. Carl Walker is just a pure right back, and I think maybe the game is moving away from that kind of uh, conventional fullback system. I think Guardiola wants, you know, Zinchenko, Arsenal, for example, that kind of system. So, but still, any any club who need a right back, he's the best in the world on his day for me. Ooh, okay, interesting. I am not going to go for Danny Carvajal. He's well past his best. Should have been sold by Real Madrid a few years ago. But I'd actually go for John Stones at right back. Uh, I think he's played really well there this year, and I totally agree with you. I think. Uh, since losing Cancelo, it feels like Pep wants one of those fullbacks to step into midfield. And Nathan Ake obviously not as comfortable on the ball as Stones. So I'd like to go for Stones personally. Ooh. I Something think Walker's not been at his is best. Is that John yeah, Stones' best position though? Because obviously we've no, seen Stones not, play. There is, sort of there is so much competition in that centre-back right. role. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to get John Stones on the pitch. I, know, I imagine you're going to put him at centre-back. Yeah. I'm going to put him at right-back. Go on then, as the City fan, you, you're, I'm going to put Carl in because okay. he did so well in the Burnabout. But you're completely right. He has been frozen out a little bit this season. That's just down to John Stones, to be honest. So I'll, I'll put him in if that works. Okay, that's, so presumably yeah. John Stones is going to be one of your centre-back suggestions as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll so go there first. you want to play then. him as a centre-back. For me, he's been yeah. maybe the best centre-back in Europe this season, or at least a contender. He is... Um, uh, people forget about the criticism uh, uh, that was levied at him when he first uh, left Everton. His first season under Guardiola was very tough. Some really tough away days. Mm. Uh, I remember at Leicester City, he got absolutely murdered. Um, but he's now blossomed, I think, into one of the best centre-backs to ever come out of this country. As simple as that. You, I don't think you could ask Rio Ferdinand, John Terry, to do what he's doing. Popping up in midfield and controlling the game mm. at the burnabout at, at points. It's a centre-back, lad. You've mentioned to elite... Uh, players from the years there, Rio and JT. Do you, do you think then John Stones is is at that level in terms of Premier League greats? Well, Rio Ferdinand was known as someone that could knock the ball around, was good at controlling yeah. play from from the baseline. Twenty years ago, when it was unheard of for a centre back to do it, yeah. 
John Stones is beyond that. He's miles beyond that. So maybe defensively he needs to improve a little bit, but I think he's come on leaps and bounds. I, I don't know. What's his weakness? I, I tend to agree, to be honest. I don't know whether this is going to be the theme of the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. but John Stones has got to be up there against those guys. Probably not in terms of what he's achieved in the Premier League just yet. But in terms of his record for England as well, I think he's gone far and beyond Rio and Terry, even though they did captain them at various stages. But John Stones has been a stalwart of the best side that I think the Premier League's ever seen. And, uh, yeah, he'd be in my team all day. OK, so you agree on John Stones, you're putting in. And there's a lot of other names. You've got Diaz, um, well, we'll Alaba, Rudiger, Militao. It's interesting to see how, who you Yeah, how do you pick here. now? Yes. So, mine is... I've temporarily lost him, but I will start talking anyway. Cool. Uh, Edo Militao <laughs> would be one of my centre-backs for sure. I think okay. he's probably been the outstanding centre-back at Real Madrid this year. Um, but, um, Did yeah, you Rudiger... Find the here? <laughs> I don't know whether he's actually in here, but, yeah, one second. Uh, Militao had been sensational this year, um, has, you know, kept Rudiger out the side. We saw Rudiger last year as probably one of the best centre-backs in yeah. the Premier League at Chelsea, but has struggled to adapt at times to, in that Real Madrid system. Having said that, he had a great game against Haaland in midweek. Mm. Uh, but Eddie Militao is the standout. And then I'd have David Alaba as my left-back. OK, we, we, we need to... Uh, well, you we find do how much you want, Militao. What, what, what do you think? think? We might have to... Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, Ruben Diaz is better than Militao. He's better than Rudiger. I think he's the best centre-back in world football on his day. On the ball, he's as good as John Stones. Off the ball, he's a leader. Don't forget how young he is. I, you, I don't think you can... Give me a weakness of Ruben Diaz defensively. He reminds me of John Terry in terms of how he plays off the ball. The block he put that he put in against, um, I forgot what it was against uh, Real Madrid at the Bernabeu was a world class block. Yeah. He did it against Bayern Munich. He's, he's already won a couple of Premier League titles. This guy is the best centre back in world football every day of the week. Um, he was going to be in my team as well. Uh, he can't but, fight. He's laid him out on his uh, line. Like, uh, uh, I didn't know the was just not here. I was going to have had the Duke is starting to go. Yeah, I'm going to have to be in the team. more space at the studio <laughs> soon. Yeah, he has to be in my team, here. but he can't be because he doesn't have the magnet. Um, Apologies for him. Uh, uh, I am happy with Diaz going in. He was going to be in my <laughs> 11, but alongside Militao with Stones at right back. But I'd like to kick off at left back. Look at the layout. This has gone pretty badly so far in terms of the layout. But yeah, David Alaba, I think, has to be in the side at somewhere. And he could play at centre-back. He can also play midfield. He plays as a 10 for Austria. This is one of the most technically gifted players of his generation. Phenomenal for Bayern Munich for so many years as well. And I think he's seamlessly adapted into that Real Madrid side as well. So I'd have him, I'd have him in at left-back. I mean, what a bargain as yeah. well. Mm. I think Real Madrid's like historic business has been very, very rich, isn't it? But players yeah. like Alaba, free transfer... Rudiger free transfer. They're obviously adapting a little bit, aren't they, in the way they do business, signing young players and older players on free transfers. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Nathan Ake. He's had a great year, but yeah. in terms of this overall quality on the pitch, you've got to get Cameron Bingo as well. We've seen Cameron yeah. Bingo playing a, a variety of really, positions. Really I mean, good, again, a very young player. Very young. And, yeah, player. fair play to him. He's made a place in that side his own. We've seen mm. Shurmany also come in and not really establish himself in that midfield, despite the absence of Casemiro this year. Yeah. So Camavinga's had to go down to left-back, but he was excellent. I, particularly in the first half, I thought the yeah. other night. A couple yeah, of errors in that second half, but he's still so young and playing out of position. But And he said that, he said that. I've seen some quotes from him saying that it's not his natural position. He yeah. doesn't particularly love playing there, but for someone who doesn't love playing there, it doesn't do badly in that position. Absolutely. But you're both agreed on that. 100%. Yeah. Them in. So that is the back line. Thoughts on the back line, Joe? Yes. So I mean, far? it's strong, isn't it? There's so many candidates. And, and obviously, Dukes is fuming. We haven't printed off the Militao magnet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I apologise there, Dukes. Uh, <laughs> let's get into the midfield, shall we? Well, this is easy for me. Rodri's the, the best defensive midfielder in the world. I mean, I don't want to keep saying about day. everyone. <laughs> uh, no, but no, this is consistently. Uh, he, he scored a massive goal against Bayern Munich. Arguably the goal that you know, set the tone for how we demolished Bayern Munich. Mm. Um, against Real Madrid, solid. This guy, if we don't, if, if if anything was to happen to him in the final games in the Premier League, the FA Cup final, the Champions League, we won't win anything this season. He's that important mm. for Man City. So for me, it's Rodri. Do you know what the stats for Rodri this season are incredible? Second most touches, second most successful passes of any player in the Premier League this season. One possession, two hundred eighty-six times in the Premier League. Only Declan Rice has one more. Most distance, aerial duels, tackles, and interceptions for Man City in the Premier League this season, and six Premier League assists. So, so it almost—they're not just statistics based on one side of his game. He's a very complete. Player. Player, isn't he? Total footballer. I've never seen anything like it. I think, you know, someone like Fernandini was very good off the ball. He was aggressive. Yeah. Maybe he didn't always have the, the goal in him, potentially. Rodri's actually scoring. He scored a big goal at the Emirates last season to help us win the Premier League. Yeah. Rodri is... He'll, he'll go down as one of the greatest ever to play in the Premier League if he stays here for, for another four or five years. Do you think he's underrated, Rodri? Or do, I think this he absolutely season, is, People yeah. are talking about him more. I mean, but... I think over the last three, four years, there's been that debate about him versus Fabinho, but we've seen yeah. this year that one of them's just completely dropped off, whereas Rodri's gone from strength to strength. I think... 
Him and Joshua Kimmich are probably the outstanding defensive midfielders yeah. in the world, but even Kimmich hasn't been particularly good for Bayern Munich. There's talk that Tuchel wants to actually potentially break up Goretzka and Kimmich. Mm. I think they've actually underachieved and they haven't done that well for Germany either. So potentially that's something to look at, but Rodri's sensational. Is no, he in no, your team? He'd your be team, my yeah. side straight okay. in. I think he's the he's one of the absolutely nailed on. Should we go to Dugues next for the other? So the, you're playing a 4-3-3, yeah. so what other two names would you uh, So I was quite here? upset not to put Fede Valverde in. I think he's a mm. sensational footballer, particularly on the basis of this season. He's probably had a better season than the guy I'm going to suggest from Real Madrid, but I think in overall quality, Luka Modric, yeah. very difficult to move out. Like Even in the build-up to that goal the other night, you can still see his enduring class. Had a few injury issues this year, but Real Madrid have already extended his deal, staying around for another year, despite the arrival of Bellingham as well. Mm. I still think he'll like, ease that young midfield uh, into the new, new era, as it were. Uh, yeah, sensational footballer, not much more to add, just brilliant. Yeah, what a player. Dude. I'm paying my respects to Modric. I hope he doesn't uh, ruin us at the Etihad because this guy, even the little the little one-two with Camavinga to get the Vinicius oh, goal, it's touch. world class. Oh. And, and Modric goes down as probably top five in the history of the position for me. He's that mm. good. You know, he's an unbelievable player. Love it. I think, right. I think he will go Love down it. actually in that position in terms of everything he's achieved. Obviously for Croatia as well, he's won a Ballon d'Or in the Ronaldo Messi mm -hmm. era, five-time Champions League. I think he will go it's down as one of the greatest in yes, midfielders in that position yeah, uh, I agree. of his era. Yeah. Talking of another one, potentially on the horizon as Easy. being one of the greatest oh, what a player. What a goal at the Bernabeu. He scored big goals on knockout football for City. So many big goals. Uh, completely underestimated when he joined Man City. Uh, this guy will go down as probably Man City's greatest ever player. Uh, he's one of the best I've ever seen live. There's um, a lot of greatest evers coming out yeah, of yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's on surreal. the day. <laughs> but I, think, I think the Champions League games like this, it, this is the moment. It's not... It's not you know, playing Newcastle, Aston Villa in the league. A league's different, but in a, in a, in a two-leg tie in the Champions League semi-final, these are where great footballers come out. The goal at the Bernabeu for De Bruyne was a moment mm. in history to c cement his legacy if he goes on to win the Champions League. He's, again, one of the greatest I've ever seen play for my club. Do you think Ooh. he could become the greatest midfielder in the history of the game? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I think it was Jamie Carragher made quite a good point in midweek wow. that you the need claim, to turn up in major finals. And unfortunately for De Bruyne, he got injured in that 2021 yeah. final after about 30 odd minutes, which was a real shame for him. Um, but we've seen it in FA Cup finals. We've seen it in Carabao Cup finals. But the Champions League in the latter stages, I remember in 2021, it was really Mares that carried you through that PSG semi-final. Then he went off in that final against Chelsea. So for him to step up in the Bernabeu was such a massive moment for him. And I really hope he delivers in the Etihad because I think he is the greatest ever that we've seen in the Premier League. Um, but he does need that Champions League for the debate to be Because there finished. was a lot of debate, wasn't there? There was people comparing him to Frank Lampard, Stephen Gerrard. But then Scholes I also League, saw midweek yeah. off the back of that, it was comparisons to Iniesta, you know, the Modric's, Zidane's. Yeah, yeah. Like, can he get to that level? Mm. He's still I think got he's definitely a few in, the years in ahead terms of, of Premier League, definitely in that conversation of greatest Premier League before ever. And if he when he said history of the treble, game, I was like, it's wow, that's be, a I think he's, if, he, if he wins yeah. a treble this year, yeah. he's got, I, he's got such a different skill set to someone like Iniesta. It's almost quite different. And it's quite difficult to compare. But in terms of that box to box, like balls in from deep, which they never really offered in the same way. I think he's the best ever. What do you think, Bibi? Yeah, 100%. He's got, he reminds me of Kaka. I mean, Kaka's kind of... He had, he had four or five years as opposed to maybe someone like a, a Roy Keane or a Gerrard who had a bit longer. Kaka, for me, how he, how he drove with the ball and how he scored big goals. Uh, and then he's got a bit of David Beckham as well. His delivery is, is as good as David Beckham on his day. Um, so I absolutely love the guy. Stick him on Easy. then. He's in. Let's go right. to the forward this line. Is where it gets this is where I think it is the hardest pick. So the right first, right wing first? Should I think, right, should we do right wing first? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to pay my respects to the, the guys that I think Bouvi might well put in there. Mares, great Champions League mm. player. Hasn't had his best season. Bernardo Silva was great against Bayern Munich in particular. I thought he was quite flat, actually, on Tuesday. Uh, one of your weaker players. But I think Rodrigo has been sensational this season. Really stepped up. Got two goals in the Copa del Rey final last weekend. I think he's now on 16 goals this season, is, which yeah. is more than his last two years combined. Uh, and I think he's on 16 in the Champions League in his entire career as well, which is only eight short of Luis Figo. So this is a guy that's already in that sort of, you know, getting those elite numbers. And obviously I'm not comparing him to Luis Figo, but this is a guy that has made the Champions League his own over the last few years. Uh, stepped up with two crucial goals last year yeah. uh, against you guys as well. Uh, so a lot of these City players will be, you know, really respectful of him. Probably doesn't get the plaudits of someone like Vinicius. Doesn't get on the ball as much as Vinicius, but in the final third, absolutely lethal. So I put him forward. You disagree, Boovy? I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm trying to find him. Uh, <laughs> oh, we've not had another issue in the back yet, have we? <laughs> Bernardo Silva, uh, he was unbelievable against Bayern Munich. Uh, a total footballer. He can dribble with the ball like, like no one else in the world. Off the ball, he works harder than everyone else. Um, I think if, if you had to 
put your money on a player to get you through a game. I think Rodrigo, he scores big goals. He's a fantastic talent. But this is a real footballer, lads. Let's be completely real. Bernardo Silva. His numbers aren't comparable to the likes of... I mean, three goals in the last 45 appearances. But do you think that's... And I've seen Pep talking about this, actually, that statistically, the numbers don't jump up. But it's what yeah. Bernardo Silva does off the ball. Yeah, uh, I'd rather with play the, with him. Uh, uh, that apparently. sometimes doesn't get respected enough. To... Yeah, if you're playing five-a-side, I'd rather play Bernardo Silva. He's going to work off the ball if you lose it on, on, on a rainy Tuesday night. <laughs> Rodrigo's a luxury player. He's fantastic. <laughs> a luxury player. Yeah, if, you, if he went to Man City, if he went to Liverpool, he, would, he wouldn't cut it because he doesn't work hard enough. Bernardo <laughs> Silva... <laughs> He doesn't. This is he's ridiculous. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is ridiculous. Think Rodrigo would cut it in the Premier League. Uh, maybe for a, a different, not, not for a Man City, not for a Liverpool. These yeah. sides where you have to work so hard off the ball to achieve things. Bernardo Silva could play any club in world. But football. if you want a match winner, we've seen in the last twelve months. If we're going on this season, I think it's only got to Rodrigo. Obviously, across his entire career, Bernardo's been magnificent. But this season alone, I mean, this guy's got a hat trick against Galatasaray. Massive goals in the lead up to the final last year. This guy is a Champions League animal. Bernardo Silva, name me a great Champions League goal he scored. Ooh. Uh, well, he's, he's, he scored a massive one against uh, against Bayern Munich and, and last season he scored some big ones. So, uh, no, Bernardo, it's about what you prefer as a footballer. I think Bernardo Silva would get in Guardiola's combined yeah, 11. Yeah, tempo setter, control the tempo, match winner. Deuce, do you agree with Bubi's claims that Rodrigo would get... It wouldn't get in the No, it's ridiculous, obviously. Like, this guy is <laughs> incredibly talented. I mean, he's signed by Real Madrid at 17. Like, he is one of the up and coming right wingers in world football. I think he'll probably go on to have a better career than Bernardo Silva. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, if you went across their entire careers, it's got to be Bernardo this season. Which, What is this all about this season? It's we did say this season. Boovie, what are you, you going to be I, swayed no, or? I'll let you do it out of politeness to Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't okay, want to okay, that is good. There you go. The next one, the striker. Now, it's Erling Haaland yeah. or Karim Benzema. I mean, mm. this, this is difficult. This is Two unbelievable players. I think if we, again, this what is this season. It's got to be Haaland. It's got to be Haaland. Yeah. Benzema has still popped up. I think he's close to 20 league goals. I think he might be on 17, 16, something like that. Uh, and he's had injury issues, of 29 course. 29 goals in all comps. Yes, uh, for... but he's had injury issues. You know, he's been you know, struggling with some of his fitness. Uh, he had the debacle of the World Cup, of course, which didn't mm. really go his way either. Haaland, on the basis of this season, it's got to be him. But respect, this is the current Ballon d'Or holder. Uh, magnificent last mm. year. Wouldn't have won the Champions League. Wouldn't have got anywhere close to the final without him. Uh, so respect to Benzema, but I think it's Haaland. Clutch player, big game player, Benzema. Mm -hmm. as well. That's the other thing in this competition. But 51 goals in all comp. Can't argue that. Haaland, I mean, not bad. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I think Erling Haaland has to have a big game against Real Madrid. And we are looking at a guy who's so young. He's achieved so much already in his career that actually the, the Real Madrid game at the Etihad is the biggest game in his career. You know, I know he scored so many goals for City and, and obviously Dortmund as well, but this is a, this is a massive moment. And we talk about the Thierry Henrys of this world and, and the big legend strikers. You know, Haaland is approaching that already in terms of his legacy in the game. Um, and if he helps City win a Champions League, you know, it, it's crazy. So for me, Haaland gets in every day of the week. And look, Benzema's just at the back end of his career as well. So if he wins the Champions League, let's say potentially wins the treble, Ballon d'Or for you. Uh, for me, it's Messi. I'm a bit of a Messi fanboy, and, and his World Cup run was was incredible. Incredible, and for me, the World Cup is so symbolic of you know, what it means to Argent Argentine yeah. fans and, and and how he performed in that final as well. Yeah. For me, Messi has to win it until he retires. You know, I think he's the best player in the world. I, I agree. He's obviously the best player of all time. He's had a sensational season. I just think it's gone so flat in the last few months, and it's not going to be announced for another what, five, six months, and he might be playing in Saudi Arabia by then. He's already been suspended by PSG for making an unauthorised trip to Saudi Arabia. PSG have gone completely off the ball, as they always do at this time of year after a Champions League exit. So I think it's difficult to give it to Messi, just Ooh. on the basis of that, despite the World Cup. So I'd probably give it to Haaland. Ooh, okay. Either way, though, he's in the team. So yep. let's get him up. Let's put him up. OK, left wing. Now, this is surely another tap-in. Got to be, got to be. I mean, I think this guy is the most electric guy in, in world football right now. His dribbling ability, the way he can manipulate space on the tightest of angles, get to the byline, um, was brilliant the other night. I thought, obviously, a sensational goal as well. He's done that throughout his career. Uh, and it's just taken on the mantle in a season where Benzema has been not as good as last year. He's not been off it by any means, but just not as good as last year. And this is a player that, you know, has gone right into that just behind Mbappe area for me. One of the top three players in the world, I think. Mm. And Jack Grealish, uh, <laughs> that's, that's for me. It has to be Jack Grealish. He's a smarter player over than Vinicius. Minute. Definitely yeah, Grealish. I'm doing it, lads. I'm, I'm definitely be, Grealish. I scored loyal. You thought long and hard about this. No, 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 I didn't at all. It's, it's the easiest decision I made all day, actually. <laughs> even, getting out, even getting out of bed. I mean, honestly, Jack Grealish, 
you've got to be loyal to the, the, the guys that are getting us towards a treble. Now, Vinicius is obviously a fantastic player. He's a, he's a good winger. He's a good tricky winger. But there's a difference between smart footballers and, and, and someone like Jack Grealish. He's playing out of position in, for me. Um, he's contributed this season. He's the first name on the team sheet. You know, with all due respect, Real Madrid aren't going to win the league. They, they can't win a treble. You know, City could win a treble with Jack Grealish being the first name on the team sheet. Turning up from January. No, he's been playing all season at a very, very high level. Of course, he absolutely has done. Um, he's a very, very smart player. His numbers aren't as good as Vinicius. He's not as quick. But, but he is that kind of smart, intricate player that I think England have lacked for years. Uh, he's so streetwise on, on the ball. when you know, the, the fouling is a big aspect to his game. He gets us up the pitch. I think he's a leader as well in terms of how he carries himself. I Doogie's think face, Grealish, by the easy. way. Doogie's not if I wanted this. someone for a night out or a scrap, <laughs> I'd go with Grealish. But if I wanted someone to win a game of football on his own, Vinicius Junior. He's, the biggest, he's, he's the biggest all diver the in world football. Right in the world at the he's moment. the softest, biggest diver in world football. And it's not how football <laughs> Look at the played. way Walker respects him. Look at the way Reese James respects him. The best right backs in world football think this is their toughest opponent. And he's been sensational for back to back years in the Champions League. In a poor Real Madrid side this year in the league, he's carried them. Uh, and I just think he's the bigger match winner. I love Grealish. I think he's a great player. I think he's been harshly treated during his time at City, to be honest. But if you're building an 11 to win a game, a one-off game, you've got to get this guy in. You're sticking him on? I'm not going to lie, baby. It's undeniable. I believe in this Junior based <laughs> on, on this season, I think. Wait, well, Grealish had a great season, but Vinicius Junior, I totally agree with Doogie, I think he's gone to the le levels of being in yeah, conversation for the best winger Definitely the one of the best players in his position in world football. So there is confirmation of the combined 11. Don't forget, that's based on this season. Let us know what you think of that good. Real Madrid-Man City combined 11 at home.